Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Wilcoxon signed rank test using Python 3, specifically here in Jupyter Lab. Now this test can be used if you have two paired ordinal variables and um, there are actually two tests then that are sometimes used, the two sample sign test or the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Both uh, uh, test and the difference between the two variables, but there's a small difference. The sign test really checks um, if the number of positive differences is the same as the number of negative differences, and uh, it ignores the size of the differences. Um, and this is something the Wilcoxon signed rank test does uh, does take into consideration, uh, because as the name implies, it uses ranks. Um, the Wilcoxon test actually r does remove any tie, so if the uh, score is the same for each variable, it will not take it into consideration. Alternatively, Pratt, for example, has a method that uh, does take these tie scores into consideration, um, or something known as partially overlapping samples t-test, but this is the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Um, I'll show you an example on how that works. Um, the example will be as a pandas data frame, so I'll first import pandas. If you've never used a package before, you probably have to first install it, and that you can do with something like exclamation sign pip install and then the name of the package. I can then load the data using read CSV. It's a CSV file after all, and the head will show me the first five records. Now there's only two variables here, before and after, so that makes life easy. And they're also already in numbers, so you do need numeric data. So if you have something like here, fully agree to fully disagree, you will first have to recode that into something with numbers. Now the most simple way of performing this test is to actually use a package from the side by stats, and they have a function in there called Wilcoxon. Uh, it does need to have the missing values removed, so I'll be creating a quick new data frame with just the two selected variables. Now there were only two, so for me this is a little bit redundant, but if you have a larger data frame then it's probably best to first select those two and then only drop the missing values from there. We can then perform the test. Uh, we do not need the continuity correction. If you do want it, you can set it to true. And the results will show two things. The statistic, um, which is in this case 85, and perhaps more important, the p-value. The e-05 means that there should be a zero point and then four zeros and then a 21184, so it's really, really small. It's less than 0.001 and more importantly less than 0.05 because that's usually the threshold. So that means in this case that there is a significant difference. Um, you could set it to true, so if you want that you get a slightly different result. Uh, the SciPy package also does have that PRET option, so if you like you can see the results from that one. Um, another parameter is the mode that can actually be set. Uh, out at the moment it's set to auto, uh, because I didn't specify it. Uh, and that means it will use an exact Wilcoxon distribution if the number of pairs is 25 or less, and otherwise, and there are no ties. Otherwise, it will use approximation with the normal distribution. So uh, you can force that um, by setting the method. We can also use the t-test function uh, from research by to perform the test. So let's load that package in. And then we can use it uh, like shown here. We select the before and after, so the two variables. Equal variance is set to false and paired to true. And then we will actually get a nice data frame showing the results. And it should give us uh, the Z value as well, which is nice. So not only the T, the, the Wilcoxon value, but also the Z value. And uh, the significance is so small that it just reports zeros here. The Z value here is not actually adjusted for ties. Uh, it's based on this formula. Uh, in the formula of uh, Wilcoxon, and uh, the W statistic. Um, uh, in here, actually, sorry, this is the Wilcoxon statistic. Um, the W statistic. The T actually in the output above. And mu is uh, this scary looking formula. And NR is nothing else than the number of ranks, so the number of pairs that are not equal to each other. 
and uh, this little symbol here is the variant which uh, looks also scary but if you look closely there's only that nr again we can also use will coxon function from pingoian um, that will actually show us a similar result and here we have um, the p-value again and uh, again that 85 now if you do want to see how you can do all of this um, in steps by going over the formula uh, I do so in the appendix I will not discuss that here I'll quickly show it but I'll leave a link to this Jupyter notebook in the description below so I would first create two lists and then I would create the, the list if they're at least not equal uh, then I can get the number of ranks uh, that I actually have I can calculate the differences I do need to keep a track of the sign if it was a positive or a negative one so that's being done in here so then I have the differences and if they were positive or negative then I need to rank them so here's a function I wrote for myself that actually can rank data so I need to rank those differences that will be done here then I can calculate the W score, which is the sum of the ranks for the positive or the minus version, the sum of the ranks for the negative. And usually they pick the smallest one, so in this case 85. Then I can calculate that mu, because I already have the number of uh, pairs that I actually have for number of ranks. And also that variance. Then I can finally determine that T by using the number of tight scores that actually is and then uh, the adjusted frequencies the standard error and then finally the z value and they should be both the same uh, except for a negative sign and then i can use the norm from the side by package to get the same result as we saw earlier okay well i hope this helped you uh if it went too fast just pause the video and go back or download the jupyter lab notebook and follow along I thank you for watching and hope it was helpful.